is now recording. Guys, thank you. It is Monday night, and it is our team call. Uh, we had a bunch of beach music playing. Uh, for those that don't know, Jennifer and I are leaving on Tuesday or Monday for Puerto Rico, uh, where we are going to get to spend time with our diamonds that qualified last year uh, for a diamond success trip. This is for our personally sponsored diamonds, and our goal for last year was nine star, and within the last six weeks, we qualified. So I'm so excited to be doing this with our team. And uh, we're going to be celebrating down there. I know that we're going to have Nicole and Sandy uh, and Kelly and uh, Jenna and, and uh, Sarah and Adam. And it's just going to be awesome. So we that is just an amazing group of people to hang out with. And what's awesome for the new people on this team is we haven't seen each other in a few months. Uh, it's hard to believe it's only been a few months. But it's going to be just like we just saw them yesterday. And there's such a team aspect, and I think Jenna touched a little bit on on her call today. I mean, if you ever watched her video she put in the Fit Family, uh, we've created such a family dynamic in our team and from our team down uh, that is absolutely amazing. I'm sorry, this really wasn't part of the uh, what we were going to talk about. Uh, and we do have Nicole Murray, but I just... I just wanted to be, you know, like I said, it just started making me think that these guys are going to show up to the house. It's going to be like we never, that we didn't just saw them yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be like, hey, what are you up to? We're, we're not going to have to catch up. Uh, we're just going to see them bolt as quick as they can to uh, get some suits on and uh, they're going down to the pool. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. And that's the kind of dynamic we want to see everyone, uh, I just want to see everyone have a team like that and we're, we try so hard to keep the Fit Family Network strong and together. And like Jenna touched about too, we have one of the strongest teams in this entire uh, in this entire beach body thing. There's four hundred. I think the numbers. What new coaches are signing up with numbers in the fives now? You know, it's five hundred thousand something. And we're and we're keeping our team strong and awesome. So I love you too, Caitlin. So I'll see you in April. So anyway, so welcome to our Monday call. Um, we've got to figure out what we're going to do for Monday's call next week because we will be traveling. Yeah. Uh, we, okay. Let's see. Agenda. We already did the welcome. Uh, recognition. Check. Uh, recognition promotions. Uh, we talked about the guest speaker and we have a call to action. Uh, okay. So. All right. So I already posted this on my wall, but... Uh, just in case you didn't see it, these are our PV rock stars for the week from last week until this week. So um, 500 Club and 300 Club. So if your name is on there, make sure that you give all those people a huge shout out. Um, Michelle Harris, Sandy Tachi, Caitlin Bear, Jesse Carter, Eric Martin, Allison Rivas, and Raina Nola, 500 Plus Club. So great job, guys. You guys are totally killing it. Congratulations to Michelle and Sandy. You guys got real close to the thousand again. So congratulations to both of you. Uh, congratulations to everyone on this list. And what's awesome is we look down the thing. We see names that we've never seen before. And, you know, guys, if you're on this call and you're one of the leading diamonds or whatever uh, on the thing, I would love to, you know, or, or even just a person on this call, you know, friend us. At least, especially me, you know, and I'd love to get to know you guys. I'd uh, love to stay connected. And just because you guys are actively trying to build a business, we'd love to know who you are. I uh, don't think, even if you're five or six removed, uh, or even more, I guess, I think our downline is up to like 12 people removed from us, if not more in some, some legs. But reach out to us. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Get active in the groups, the Fit Family. Now, get active. Ask questions. Fail forward. You know, we teach fail forward. Fail your way to the million dollars. Uh, get in there. Don't think that because you're new you can't post. We want you in there. So definitely. This is something that we said we were going to add last week, right? Right. Yeah, we did. So you want to read those out? I mean, these are people who these are. These are people that added at least two coaches in the last seven days, right? Right. So um, the reason that we thought to start – giving some special recognition to the team builders is because um, a lot of people build their businesses, you know, by adding coaches and other people may do it, you know, by just, you know, a lot of sales. 
So, um, but when you're a team builder, you're uh, actively adding people to your network and adding people into your team. So we wanted to just give some special recognition to the people on this list who have added two or more coaches onto their team. So, right, because when they do that, they don't go into personal volume. It shows up in the team volume. So someone like Jennifer Greenberg only signs coaches. I think her team, I think her PV is usually under 200, right? Even if, you know, somewhere around there for certain weeks. So because everyone signs up as coaches, so they get the volume. Uh, one person who is uh, uh, not on this list, uh, we had already uploaded the slides and we could not get them back down again. Uh, so one person who's not on there is under Michelle Harris's team, Julie Stoltz. Uh, congratulations to you. You added two people in the last seven days. Yeah, so great job to Jenny Borgard, Caitlin Mullimar, Kristen Dunn, Molly Franklin, Sandy Tachi, Stacey Van Oak, and Stella Hastings. Congratulations, guys. Great job, guys. Super proud of you. All right. Okay, this is another new thing that we're going to start doing each week. So we're going to start doing a success spotlight um, that's going to be like a success from the business aspect of Beachbody, not like a, you know, fitness aspect. So this is just a cool little success story from Kelly. And um, I was just asking for things that, you know, where Beachbody has helped their life. And so she says, Instead of having to sell my horse that I've had for 18 years because the girl that was taking care of him couldn't keep him at our place, I was able to pay for his board and care and have him closer to us so my children can learn how to ride on the one that I trained and trust completely. So while all of us you know, may not have horses and can't totally relate, but you can think about how cool that probably was for Kelly, like where she was probably at a fork in the road where she had to make that decision of either getting rid of this horse or having the ability to, you know, make other arrangements. And so that's super cool that from Beachbody, from this little side job, she's able to do that. And now her kids get to share that same experience that she's had with this horse for 18 years or whatever it was. So um, thank you so much for sharing that with us. And it's just a neat little thing that you can share with other people when you're talking about the business. Um, just little, little things that this that this awesome company has, you know, enriched our lives and been able to help us do things we wouldn't have otherwise been able to do. Yeah, I think one of the things that people get a little uh, sidetracked on is they see a lot of big success that's happened in the group. I mean, we've got six-figure earners, a couple of them now in, in, in the Fit Family Network. Mm -hmm. And people think that the sex and successes are all on that. Uh, you know, when Jennifer Greenberg started this business, all she wanted was to get her nails done. So when she when she starts to achieve these goals, they're great. So you know we always ask people, what would you do with an extra five hundred dollars a month? That's the crust. That's like your sweet spot of this business. Is someone who's looking to make between two to five hundred dollars extra money so that they can do because what'll happen is if we can get them there, we can just encourage them for something. Just think of Scotty. If Jennifer would have told Scotty when he said, "What's your dream big goal?" And she said, well, I'd like to get my nails done. He said, okay, well, I'm going to move on from you. So remember that. Encourage them. And that's why we want to start posting uh, like these. So we want to post things like this because these kind of events are truly what the business opportunity is about. Sure, you can end up becoming rich. Yes, we're not going to even say you won't. Uh, but the, ab the absolute sweet spot is coaches on this team that are making between $500 and $1,000 a month. Because that changes, that is an amazing, that is what a part-time job is for someone who's working at McDonald's or as a, as a cashier or a waitress. That's the sweet spot. And that's really what we want to focus in. Right. So please um, send me your success stories and maybe you'll be featured next week. All right. Okay. February Go For No winner. Congratulations, Debbie Horn. I already gave her a shout out in the team page, but I just wanted to again congratulate you. Um, so you were the first one to send me your hundred, uh, your hundred people that you invited already, and it's only. And I think when we talked about it, it was like February thirteenth. So, so that's awesome that you did a hundred invites already, like just a couple weeks into the month. So great job. And Caitlin, I'm gonna let you buy me a drink when we get to Moon Palace. So. All right. Register now. Uh, the registration is open still for both the 2015 Winter Summit and Summer Summit. 
Get on the list. I'm not going to harp on this much longer. Uh, but get on the list. So, we have a tip of the week. I have no clue what that is. Oh, is that the thing? Oh, you asked me? Oh, I do know what that is. Okay. So, what'd you write? Well, let me see what I wrote here. Uh, Jen asked me if she wanted me to give a tip of the week. So, my tip of the week, this is what I said. I just didn't see it on this cool little Batman slide. Yes, Caitlin, it's... it's she, okay, I'll let you buy me two drinks then. So. Hey, back on track. Oh, sorry, squirrel, shiny thing. Okay, so be your best coach and challenger. Guys, we always talk about this, and uh, if you want your challenge groups to be active, and you want people to be active in your challenge groups, make sure that you're active in them. Uh, make sure that you're running your race as well. Uh, don't don't get, expect other people to be active in the groups and you're not. This also goes for those people that are doing, let's say, one of my challenge groups or doing a, an Emerald training or a network training or um, what? Or a push group. Um, so if your challenge group and push group participation is low, you can expect that to reflect in your PS coaches and your challengers as well. So just something to keep in mind, if you are doing some sort of push group, it seems like we've got a million groups going on, but there's some really good ones out there, some that deserve a little bit of attention, right? Right. Maybe sure. you can talk about how you struggle in this and how you're going to fix it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I struggle with that too, like in, even in my own challenge group sometimes, you know, like... There, you know, it's supposed to be like meal planning Sunday, and then I don't meal plan, so I didn't post anything on Sunday. Those kind of things, you know, it may not seem like a big deal, but it's the slight edge. It's the things that are easy to do and easy not to do, and um, they kind of compound the fact that it seems like it's not that big of a deal, but it, it ends up reflecting to be a big deal. Or like the, um, you know, Mike is running a couple of groups that are in a different format, and um take a little extra effort to actually go and check into, which I've personally failed to do. So, um, you know, I'm guilty of it too, and it's just a matter of taking into account of where you are and correcting your path and getting back on track. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Is this my slide? No. Well, this is really cool. Okay, so anyways, Nicole Murray. First time. Yeah. Right? Nicole Murray, Jennifer's first diamond. And she was the coach to make me go diamond. And she was the coach to make her go diamond. And she was, and she is our longest running, breaking diamond that we have. Nicole Murray is absolutely awesome. She is a police wife. Jennifer met her in a police wife group. Uh, I remember the first time we met Nicole in Ray Band. Uh, anyone doesn't know, that's why I call oh, uh, Ray, that's her husband. Uh, I love him, good brother. So we met them, and we went uh, wine hopping, Ray Van Drove, and uh, we went all over Pittsburgh. No, where was it? It was, uh, where were we? That lake area. Lake something or other. And, great lake. <laughs> so it was, it was over there. You could tell it was really good. Uh, we had a great time, and we got to meet her. I think she was one of the first coaches we had ever met, like, outside. Yeah, and she was, like, one of our first, the first time that we ever met somebody. Eerie. That we didn't know, or like that we only knew through social media that we met in person. Yeah, so she is a she's a true testament to us of what absolutely just doing the necessary behaviors without giving up. I know she may talk about some of her journey and struggles, but she's so consistent and she's always been there for us and she's helped us. You know, we always say that you cannot get to where you are without the help of your downline. That's why it's a giver's gain system. And every time we've needed Nicole for us, no matter what it was, she was there for us. And for that, we'll always be there for her. And uh, she's a great friend, and uh, we're so happy to have her on our call. And uh, like Caitlin says, she's just awesome in general. All right, Nicole, we are going to switch this over to you. So if you do have a piece of cake in your hand, you may want to put it down. Uh, Anyways, I'm Nicole and making her like the worst and trying to stay accountable for our nutrition, but she's doing so awesome right now with the 21-day fix extreme. So we're now just vicariously thinking about junk food. 
So we don't actually have Kate, I don't think. So I'm going to switch this over to you. Stop bug. Can you guys all hear me? Ooh. Okay, okay, there might be a little bit of a delay because my got cut off and I'm like, oh, I guess it's time to start broadcasting. So, <laughs> thank you, Mike and Jen, for the great introduction and thank you, everybody, for logging on to the call. It means so much to see, you know, so many of you logging on to so hear me speak and it's great to see you guys log on every week because that means, you know, you're serious about your business and you want to grow and work and, you know, be the best coaches that um, you guys can possibly so hi, I'm Nicole. Some of you guys know me. Some of you guys don't know who the heck I am. Um, I'm from Pittsburgh. Um, I've been a coach. Well, actually, come on. Let me change my slide here. There we go. Okay, so I'm um, a two-star qualified uh, coach right now. I'm certified in sanity, bio, and body combat. And I've been a coach since December 2011, with a question mark, because when I was doing these slides, I really wasn't sure how long I was going to coach, but it's been, it's been quite some time. When I started, we were like this this big, it's like the bombshell dynasty, like a teeny tiny team, and now we're like huge. Um, oh, 1225, 2011, thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate you. <laughs> Okay, so my story, you kind of see the picture at the top of your screen there. Um, that was me fresh off of a divorce at 23. Um, I looked like I'm having a pretty good time there. And, you know, thinking back, I, I probably was with the help of a lot of alcohol because that's kind of where my life was taking me at that point. Um, I always say that there was always a seat for one on the Hot Mess Express when I was around during that point of life. Um, that's for a completely different call. Uh, the picture below is with me and my beautiful team last year at Summit in Las Vegas. Um, as you can see, there's just been a huge transformation and you know, the transformation honestly wouldn't have been possible without Jennifer first coming into my life. Um, you know, this, this whole thing started because, um, as you guys all know, when you go through a breakup or divorce, if you have joint friends, your friends will go one way or they'll go the other. And many of my friends I had met through the other person, so I was kind of left you know, with, with not many people to connect to after that point in life. Um, I started dating my now husband, and he decided that he wanted to become a police officer, which was totally new wrong for me. Typically, I was the one saying, oh, God, it's the police. Not like, oh, yeah, my husband's a cop. <laughs> so it was definitely something different. So when that happened, I, I didn't know you know, what what the heck to do. I had nobody to talk to. I had just read some things online about how difficult it could be to be a police spouse. And that was the direction that our relationship was heading in. So I joined an online community for Police Wise, and that's where I met Jennifer. Um, and we were friends long before Beachbody. I don't even think she was a coach when we actually, you know, really started being friends. Um, and I was teaching Zoom at the time, multiple nights a week, and my husband was working the PM shift, and I am not one of those women who is good in the kitchen or anything like that. I don't know how to make anything. Um, <laughs> like, like, just throwing a message on Facebook, stop distracting me. Um, but, so I'm not very good in the kitchen, but there was one thing that I knew how to make. And it was a cheeseburger, and I knew how to make that on my grill outside. Ray showed me how to use the gas grill, so I thought it was wonderful. So I had this endless supply of cheeseburgers at my house, and every single night after Zumba, I would make a cheeseburger for dinner. And if I didn't want a cheeseburger that night, then I would go to the ice cream place down the road, and I'd get a double scoop of ice cream for dinner, and literally that was my dinner. Maybe I had a hamburger help around there, but like, that was it. Um, but I would tell Jennifer this, and she's like, oh my god, Nicole, you can't do that, holy crap, you cannot eat like this anymore. 
So she sent me this package to Ecology, and it kind of sat on my camera for a while. And then one morning after my Saturday Zumba class, I decided I was going to make it the same thing was all about. And I really liked it. Um, fast forward, my husband bought me the um, what was it, Turbo Jam uh, Challenge Pack. So I bought that, and I bought the Shakeology with it, and then I just decided to be a coach, and you know, that's how I got into coaching from there. Um, let's see. Okay, so my big screw up, which will lead into this call, I promise. Um, also known in this business as family forward. So if you can see the picture, uh, just real quick, I can, can I give a shout out to my little sister. She's the one on the left, and we don't really know who Honey Boo Boo is in the back there. But <laughs> hopefully one day she'll be on these calls too, because she did just sign as a coach last week, so I'm really, really excited. Um, but anyway, my biggest group in the business, I always thought it was, um, you know, like, oh, I dropped rank, or oh, what am I success of? And it turns out that my big screw up is something a lot, a lot bigger than that. It was so detrimental to my business, and that's what I'm going to share with you guys tonight and kind of how to get around it. Um, if you see me looking off to the side, I have notes over here on the water, so that's fine. Um, the first year in my business, you know, I was kind of starstruck by certain coaches. Lindsay Matley, Scotty Hobbs, Katie Hefner, you know, like the big name people, people who were really seasoned in this business. And I just wanted to be them. Like, it wasn't just like, oh, no, I'm going to look at them for inspiration. No, like, I wanted to be Lindsay Matley. I wanted to be Katie Hefner. I wanted to be the female version of Scotty Hobbs. And, you know, what I found through following them is that they, there was a lot of stuff about them that they weren't anything like me, and that's not a bad thing. That it just, I was following people who weren't like me. And one of the keys in this business, which I'll touch on later, is following people and, you know, getting to be with people who are like you. Um, not completely, but in, in a different realm there. Um, our goals were different, our lives were different, some of them were parents, some of them weren't. Um, you know, it just, I was trying to be somebody that I wasn't, and that's part of my personality and a huge flaw of it. Ever since I was young, I have never been okay with being myself, which I know a lot of you around this call and like, are you kidding me? Like, you're insane. That's every time I meet you, you're just outgoing. And I'm going to tell you right now, that took a lot of work. <laughs> that took a lot of getting okay with me being myself. Um, but my best has never been good enough for me. I've always wanted to be somebody else's best, if that makes sense. So much of my beach body journey has always been about trying to be somebody else and not being with myself. Um, and you would think that maybe this is something I struggled with at the beginning, but this is actually something that I was struggling with up until September of last year. And it was an extremely, extremely low point for me in my business. And even my coaches don't know this, so yeah, I'm just going to talk about it. Um, <laughs> so I found myself one day driving up to Lake Erie, ironically, where Jennifer and I met for the first time in person. I took myself, my personal development, my thoughts, and my carnal forms, and I went up to the beach for the day because um, I was not feeling like myself for a very long time in this business. I felt like I was just kind of drifting off in beach body land by myself, and like I had nobody. I felt like I was not a leader to my team. I felt like, why would my team even want to follow somebody like me? I uh, didn't feel like anything that I was doing was natural, um, and nothing seemed to fit. Seriously, if someone said beach body or a beach body coach, it made my skin crawl. Like, and I know that's horrible to say, but that's the point that I was at in September. I didn't know what to do. And so I was sitting on the beach, and I'm thinking, you know, like, you know, I've tried to do the Lindsay Batley thing, I've tried to do the Katie thing, I've tried to do the Jen thing, I've tried to do the Jenna thing, and then it just hit me. Why don't you just do the Nicole thing? This whole time, I've been modeling my business, not even modeling my business, modeling me after all these other people. And you know where it got me? It didn't get me anywhere. That's why I hated it. I hated it because I was... I was 
learning somebody else's business in my life. And that just absolutely did not fit whatsoever. So what I needed to do was start back in the beginning and use myself as the blueprint for my business, so to speak. And that kind of, you know, that gets into getting okay and being who you are. And now I can say I'm not being who I am, but, you know, it, it's always a work in progress. Um, that can always be really hard to do, too. I mean, you get on these calls with your uplines, and they have these goals for you, and you have goals for yourself, and sometimes they mesh, and sometimes they just don't. But you never want to disappoint anybody. So you're like, yeah, okay, I'm going to go for that goal. And then you get off the call and you're thinking like, oh, I don't know how I'm going to do this. And it just it just feels icky. Have you ever just had one of those moments? And you don't have to comment below, but have you ever just had someone give you a goal and it's not the good scary? Like, you know, there's, there's that good scary. No, this is the, this just feels icky. Like, I just, like, it's not driving. Um, that's when you need to get real with yourself and, and and start asking, why are you doing this? Why does other person want you to do this? Why are you doing this? Because the moment you can get 110% fine with your why is the moment your why is actually going to drive your business. A lot of people say your why should make you cry. Well, I say that if you're 110% honest with your why, it's going to make you fly. It's going to make you soar in this business and do things that you never thought possible. So step one is to get real with your why. Not the why of everybody else and every other group you're in. Your why. If you're here to help others, say, I'm here to help others. If you're here saying, but I need to make my mortgage payment, say that you're doing it for the money, too. It is okay. It is okay to have wives that are different than everybody else's. So, as you see, it's totally cool to want something different from everybody else. Um, this took me a long time to get used to, but... Now that I have, I can tell you that my business has completely transformed, and I have attracted some of some of my newer coaches are so full of life. We do calls every week. We meet in person. I talk to them one on one. They bring me so much joy that this 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 isn't a business anymore. Like I understand now. I understand what it means when people say I love what I do as a beach body coach because now guess what. I love what I do as a beach body coach too. And you want to know why? It's because I'm doing what I want to do, how I want to do it, and molding it to my lifestyle. So it's okay to want different things. Coaching is not cookie cutter. We all want different results. We all get into it for different reasons. And our goals are driven by different factors. Like I said, you need to be 110% fine with why you're doing this. If you're doing this to help people because that's what 50 people ahead of you just said and you just kind of want to run with that crowd, but I mean you like helping people but you also want to do it for other reasons like maybe paying off your debt or getting that new car or getting your nails done or making your mortgage payment, then do you. Like be honest with yourself because no one's going to sit here and judge you and say the reason why you're doing this is wrong. You know, be honest with yourself, do you, and do it the way that you you want to do it. What is the key to success? A lot of my new coaches ask me, like, well, how did you become successful? And I just told you the story of how I definitely didn't become successful and how everything ended up turning around. The key to success is being 100% okay with what you want and owning it. So a fun little story. Um, last year... <sighs> January Super Saturday, I was doing the Ultimate Reset, which is a 21-day intensive program that is crazy, great, crazy. And all of my girlfriends and my team were going out to lunch after Super Saturday, and I could not be put in that situation because I have a hard time with food, and I knew I would cheat um, if I went out, and I didn't want to cheat. So instead, what I did was I went to the tattoo parlor, <laughs> And um, I got this tattoo on my wrist. I don't know. If you know I can't like turn my wrist up. <laughs> anyway, there's a tattoo on my wrist. Hey, okay, yeah, it's right there. <laughs> and what it is is it's a um, it's a little it's a little key and it has a heart on the top. And um, 
everyone asks me, like, what does that mean? Is that someone has to cue your heart? And I'm like, no, I totally didn't do it for that reason. The reason is because it reminds me every time I look at it that believing in yourself, which is the heart, is the key to success. And that's what this slide is about, being 100% okay with what you want and owning it. So once you figure out what you really want and you own that, you want to pay off your car, you want to pay off your mortgage, you know, you put your kid through college, whatever the heck it is, keep your goals that relate to what you want. Don't sit here and make a goal that's off in left field, you know, to the actual goal that what you the the actual goal that you want. We want you to hit a home run with that goal. Not hit a foul ball and like try again somewhere else. So you need to focus, you need to keep goals that relate with what you want. If you're going to be like somebody, make sure that somebody has similar goals to you. Now they can have goals that are higher than you because that's going to push you higher. You don't want to be someone that has like no expectation for themselves and be like, I'm going to hang out with that person because that's safety zone. No, I mean, you want a little bit higher. But, you know, a lot of us star diamonds, we have super duper top coaches that we follow that relate to us. And I will just say without saying any names, I was following one of the top coaches for a while because I just loved her. I have met her in person. She was just sweet and awesome and completely laid back and totally chill. And I would just look at her and be like, damn, she's just so confident in being her and just chill, laid back personality. And then I started looking at how she like does stuff on the business side. And you know, it's, it's not wrong, but it, it's, it's just, it isn't my style. So, on the surface, someone can look very much like you, but if you're really going to follow them and you have your goals, you need to make sure that the way that they're doing things is also kind of the way that would work with your life. The way that she was kind of doing things wasn't working with my life, so I was like, oh, it's been done, but time to move on. Um, so, let's see here. Yes, when you go against yourself, it kind of looks like the picture on the right there of the guy pulling the semi. That's exactly how I felt in the summer of last year. I felt like no matter what I did, I could log on to 100 different calls. I could write 500 blogs. I could invite, you know, a thousand different people. That's how my business felt every single day. Because I was trying to do it with somebody else. And it felt just as miserable as that looks. And guess what? It went just about as fast growth-wise. And I don't even know if this gentleman ever made it across the finish line. But I was feeling like I wasn't going to make it across the finish line either. So again, you don't want to feel like that when you're working your business. You don't want to feel like like one of those Kenyans in Marathon that's just like, yeah, I can do a marathon in an hour and a half. And it just looks so nervous. And you're just like, run like a gazelle. That's how you want your business to feel. So it feels like this. It's time for a plot twist and for you to do something different. If you feel like a Kenyan, keep on going. Hashtag feel like a Kenyan. I don't know if that would be appropriate or not, but feel like a gazelle. Feel like something. But don't feel like that guy. And along the way, things are going to change. It's okay if things change because life happens. We need to be flexible, open, and welcoming the changes in your life. If you don't know how to do that, then go back a couple weeks and listen to Kate and Max calls um, about like changing your course of action and being okay with that. Uh, you need to use change that's happening to you to help more people. So let's say you have a setback in your health or something. You know, like Jenna had a huge huge thing happened to her just a couple months ago in the form of a blood clot. I mean, she was in some bad shape. I didn't even realize it was one of her best friends just how bad it was. But do you know how many people she's able to help now with that? How many people that are sitting there possibly feeling helpless, like they can't get off the couch because they're afraid just getting them off the couch. You know, like she's doing these crazy, amazing things. Or how about all of you new moms out there that have babies? Do you know how many new moms are sitting there thinking my life is over because I'm a mom now? And you're sitting here posting workout videos of your kid on your back when you're doing push-ups? Like that's freaking huge. And that's what you need to do when life hands you a lemon. You make that into lemonade. You, you figure out a way to switch your course of action and to find new people to direct your message to you help more people by accepting life's changes and rolling with it. And you know what? If that life change brings you to a different goal in each body, then you need to be confident with that. Pause. I need a drink of water.
you read that for me. Thank you. I'm trying to wet the whistle. So, a little personal story. Um, this time last year, I was looking to quit my job. I was looking to quit. I had a date set for July, and my goal was to go to Ocean City and never have to come back to work. And I was 100% dead set on that. That's what I wanted to do because I hated my job. I hated, hated my job. Well, the times turned, and this new position at my office came open that I had been looking to come open for four years, four years. So it came open, and I was like, uh, I was talking to my husband, and I was like, I'm not going to apply for it because I want to quit my job. And, you know, he said, well, why don't you just apply for it, and if you get it, and you hate it, well, you're still in a position where you could quit your job. So you're kind of at a win-win here, or you could get it, you can love it, and you can still do both. So I went for it, and lo and behold, I ended up getting the job, and lo and behold, about a year later, I love what I do. I might not like getting up for the fuck crap of dawn and going to sit in my old car and driving there, but once I get there, I actually really love what I do, which is hard for people to say. I have a great supervisor um, who I posted about before. You know, I work with wonderful people, and I love, I love my work. So at that point, my business goals changed, and it was no longer you know, working to quit my job, it was just working to be the best coach that I could be, to continue growing my business, but keeping in the back of my mind that, you know, my timetable may have changed here a little bit, that I might not have as much freedom um, that I once had at work to, to do beach body, or even after work, I might be exhausted because now I manage product or uh, projects, and that keeps me at work sometimes. There's no such thing as an eight-hour day. I'm just going to say that. There's no such thing as an eight-hour day. So some days I'm more tired than others. But what that little plot twist made me do was reevaluate everything I was doing with my business. And I had to adapt. So if you have to adapt, that's fine. You just need to figure out how to do it. For me, I structure my life to achieve my idea of success. And the way that I do this is I always plan one thing, just one, not like five million, just one. Um, in the morning to make sure my business is growing. This could be drinking Shakeology, working out, personal development, inviting one person, checking into my challenge group, saying hi on Facebook, anything. I need to do one thing before I even start anything else for the day because that one thing is going to put beach body into motion for the day. Then on lunch, I come back and I check in with beach body and I check in with beach body after work. So I'm still making things work, but I'm okay with doing it differently. And you know, some people might sit here and say, but you had a goal of quitting your job and now you just let that goal go. Well, no, because I still don't have the option to quit if I ever hate my job again. So what I'm doing in the meantime is I'm just loving both. I am seriously just loving both. And I am working each body into my life as it works, which you sometimes see me um, at a coffee shop on my lunch break or early in the morning or in the evening if my husband goes to a hockey game and I'm like, you know, he's playing NHL on PlayStation 3 to unwind after his long day. I'm doing beach body. I'm making it work. I'm just making it work a different way. And you know what? Making it work a different way for me is the most wonderful thing ever because it is never about working four additional hours a day. It's about doing something I love for those four hours a day. So now that you know that everybody is different, and you might be sitting here thinking, gosh, I've been living a double life, and I need to actually be who I am, the first thing you need to do is stop with your excuses. Seriously, like, cut it out. I don't care. And this is where I, I get very blunt. I don't care if you're a mom. I don't care if you're a single mom. I don't care if you're a grad student. I don't care if you work five different jobs. Um, I don't care if you've been in network marketing before and it's failed. I don't care if you've never been in network marketing before. I don't care if you like sales, and I don't care if you hate sales. If you've gathered anything from this call, yes, Jamie Rice, it's true, she doesn't care. <laughs> it is just to do you, and that's what I always tell my coaches. Figure out a way to make it work with your lifestyle so that you still feel as balanced as possible, um, but you're still moving forward. The thing is, Anybody you ever see on a top 10 panel of each body has had everything that I just listed come against them. Sometimes even more. Like some of those stories, like I was a bankrupt bartender, or, you know, my daughter had a brain bleed, or, you know, I had absolutely no money, I had a drug problem, blah, blah, blah. 
That's not BS. Like, that's real deal stuff. People have, be funny has been somebody's last excuse. I was watching the How to Overcome Objections video today. Michael told you how to finish them. And Barbie Decker, who is one of the Beach Body Millionaires, said that she was on welfare and putting her groceries on credit cards, and she still signed up for Beach Body because she was sitting there thinking this could be the one thing that moves me forward. And guess what? Millionaire Beach Body now with buy welfare. She had the world against her, and she made it work. Everybody has had the world against them at some point and has made this work. And I know you might be sitting there thinking, Oh, she has no idea what she's talking about. She doesn't even have kids. No, but yeah, I realize it is a 100% different ball game. And hats off to you, moms and dads. But you just need to find a way to make it work with your life. You just need to find a way. There was a quote that I found in my personal development that I really loved. When you argue with your limitations, you get to keep them. So if you're sitting here playing the victim all the time, your limitations are going to stay where they are, and you're never going to rise above them because every time you sit here and say she doesn't understand or she doesn't know or they don't get it or trying to be me, all you're doing is if you're trying to go up, this is you, this is your potential, you're just going like this, and you're never going to rise above that until you realize my life is different, I need to look at what I'm doing a little differently, and I need to do it differently. So what you need to do is you need to keep going, switch it up, slow it down, speed it up, find your speed, and then motor forward. Don't stop because you think that you have a limitation. A limitation is just like a little, it's just like a little log in your path. Hop over the gosh darn thing, just keep on going. So what happens when you do your business this way? You start to feel really, really proud because you accomplished something that you set out to do, not somebody else set out for you to do, that you wanted to do too. And let me tell you, that feeling of accomplishment is so freaking awesome. Like, it is so great. That second picture down on the right-hand side is me on stage at Summit for my one-star recognition. And it's one of the top ten highlights of my life. <laughs> you will have more balance with your life. I can go out with my friends and not feel guilty. I can have a movie night with my husband and put my phone aside because I know when it's time to work, I push everything aside and I focus on my work. And when it's time to play, I can play. I have that balance and it feels great. And it feels great and I have the balance because I'm 100% clear on what I want to do. Your business will grow. I mentioned my newer coaches coming in and even my seasoned coaches. I think we have all really grown in the past six months of finding out truly who we are. You know, I had Amy go diamond. That was a goal she has been working on for so long and she achieved it and she was so excited, and I was, you know, it, I always tell them, like, I get more excited over your goals than I get on the film. But, you know, I have, you know, Jamie Grace is commenting now. I have Holly. I have Corey. Corey comes to my class every week. Just, just watching them all grow, and I know that if I would have stayed silent and been that Debbie Downer coach that was just floating off in beach body land, they might not have gone to these levels because misery loves company, and they may have fallen down with me. So it's not only important for your own self to figure out what the heck you're doing, but for your entire team, because then your entire team will figure out what the heck they're doing, and your business will grow. And then you can start enjoying the highs and lows of this business, because um, our team, when we have lows in business, we get on a Zoom call, we talk about it, and we discuss different ways to get around it. We don't just sit there and say, no one's buying challenge packs. We figure out how to work around it, and we learn from each other. And finally, you will love what do you do? I am sure there are some of you on this call and you don't have to identify yourselves that maybe see this is one more thing to do and it's 944 and I wish you would shut up so I can go put my kid to bed. I get it and I'm almost shutting up, I promise. But when you get to the point that everything just connects, you really will love what you do. And you won't love what you do because that's the whole thing to say. You will love what you do because you really have heart in what you do. So my call to action for you is this. Figure out what you want and go for it. Just do you. You don't have to post this and fit for life. You don't have to post this and help you for life or an intensity. You don't have to post this anywhere. I just want you to get real with yourself tonight, and I want you to figure out what it is you want from this business. What do you want? And I want you to go after it, and I want you to go after it by 110% effort. And if you guys are at Cancun, 
or if you guys are in Summit and this is a business switch for you and you're sitting there and someone's like, oh my gosh, my mind blown, everything's changed, then I want to hear about it. Come up to me, introduce yourself, and tell me how your business has changed. Until then, stay cool, keep calm, relax, grow a margarita, and have a great life. And I'm done. Thank you so much for tuning in, you guys. I wish you guys all the love and success in your business. Bye! Awesome. I think there was a little bit of a delay, right? Uh, I think she turned it over. Yeah. I think. Hopefully she did. If not, I cut her off. So, thank you so much, Nicole. That was... Okay, good. <clears throat> oh, okay, good. So, she did. She turned it back over. So, thank you so much. That was awesome. Guys, um, I'm going to let you go. There's really nothing I can do to, to top that. It was awesome. Jennifer and I... Uh, just in pure Nicole fashion, she had us laughing, and she had us, she had us teared up, and she just sent us through all the emotional roller coasters that she's good at doing. And uh, but she, uh, you know, me and Jen have been uh, decided we're a little distracted finding out which animal we wanted to hashtag ourselves at, and uh, you know, so I guess we can talk about that. Yeah, and of course, Jennifer. Wants to know, but probably in private, which goal she gave that made her feel icky. But either way, we absolutely love you. Thank you so much for this call. Thank you for putting it together. And uh, guys, let's go ahead and actually figure out why you're doing this. So have a great, great evening. And, and we are going to post it later on next week's call. So we're still not totally sure on that. We know we're going to have one. So we're still working on the details on that because we thought Nicole was next week, but we planned her for this week, and she adapted and overcame and did it this week because that's what we told everyone. So thank you, Nicole, for that. All right, so guys, thank you, and have a great week. Remember, it is Team Cup Month. Do not forget. Do not forget. While you're figuring out what you want to go for, go for Tier 2 or 3 prizes. So, and then keep your other ones personal. But go for prizes. Go for bobbleheads. We need bobbleheads. There are not enough bobbleheads. So, guys, Team Cut Month. All right. Ready? Break. Have a good night. Say goodbye. Bye.